Welcome to the Williams College Football Show. I'm your host, Chris Dufour. Joining me, as always, on the program, Eve's head coach, Aaron Kelton. Welcome to the show, Coach. Great to see you, Chris. Great to see you. Now we have to dive right in, of course, to last week. Yeah. When we took a trip up to the Middlebury, Vermont, and the Panthers. What a game. It was an interesting game because uh, a lot of back and forth in the first half. Uh, and we go into halftime trailing 9-7. Come right out, start the second half, boom, take a 14-9 lead. And I'm thinking to myself watching the game, we're, this is it. We're two contested teams who are going to sure. be right in it. And then, uh, you know, was, I think they had a 71-yard touchdown pass and things. I think they ended up scoring 27 unanswered points. Sure. And, and we lose, uh, Williams loses 34-34. Uh, 36-14. 36-14. I had them reversed. Thanks, yes. Coach. <laughs> 36-14. So anyway, why don't you give us a few thoughts on what you saw early, and then and then uh, we'll talk more about the second half. You know, I thought that um, both teams came out and <clears throat> were trying to establish what they wanted to do, and and, and really uh, was a good fight. Uh, good fight. You know, first first quarter, both teams are still feeling each other out. Uh, we managed to get a drive in at the end of the first quarter, the beginning of the second quarter, and, and score a touchdown. Um, and then it's just deflating because the next kickoff we give up uh, the, the kick return. And, Not for the and so touchdown. That, yeah, right. that takes takes a lot out of what you've earned and, and uh, what you've done. And uh, you know we did block the kick, so it was seven to six, and and we're still feeling good. And then uh, we, you know, about eight minutes we went back and forth with some possessions, and then they they managed to put a drive together and kick a field goal to go up nine to seven. Um, and then the half ended, and so we, we felt good about where we were coming out, um, and, and certainly uh, we were able to, to move the ball down the field. And you know, after getting, a, uh, I think it was a four-play series for them, uh, they punted, and we moved the ball down the field, and were able to score. And so we went up uh, 14 to nine, and and then um, you know, it was it was pretty unfortunate at that point. We we were decimated by just injuries in the secondary you know throughout the game and so you know we, we made some substitutions they they hit us on a couple of big throws uh, one of them being the 71 yard touchdown uh, we just didn't you know play particularly well on that snap but um, yeah like you said I they think throw it you know we knew they yeah. were going to throw it they throw it 40 40 plus times a game and right. you know that you know that started to snowball down the hill if you will uh, just because we were so young back there and those guys were, uh, you know, a little bit shell-shocked to, to get so many balls thrown at them. But, but uh, Middlebury, I give them all, all the credit that they need. They, they did a good job with, with their game plan at, in the second half and, and making adjustments. Yeah, and so uh, uh, like you mentioned, uh, it was 9-7 at the half. Uh, you're, right in, you're right in the ball game. Well, what did you talk about at halftime? What kind of things did you guys talk about? With uh, we, we talked about just again getting back to to the things that we we were doing um, and, and really making you know a couple guys got nicked up at, at halftime so we, we were trying to really put lineups together and we had worked on a number of different um, scheme things during the week and in guys in positions that we were counting on and so we had to get away from some of those because of personnel problems right you yeah. know and and so uh, it forced some guys to have to play who, who probably weren't quite ready to play as many snaps as they did, um, but it was a learning experience for them. Uh, but what we talked about was being consistent and, and really just going out and playing, having fun at playing and, and, and uh, getting after it. And, and uh, unfortunately, you know, Middlebury was the better team in the second half, uh, but, but our guys continued to fight all the way down to the last second, and, and that's what we're about. Oh, yeah, and one thing that you do do consistently is get that effort and that fight. That Absolutely. week in and week out. I did want to talk about, because uh, we had talked about it off the air, a little bit about the tackling, you know, and I think uh, the 71-yard the pass to Milano especially wasn't a sure. deep bomb. It was right. a short pass where sure. he had a couple chances at sure. him, he had a chance and he split and the middle. He, and split, that, he split through two guys, and, and 
uh, made a move and, and they bumped each other off and, and you know he's a good player. He's an all conference receiver and, and, uh, and so they, they make those kinds of plays. And what, what, what do you, uh, you know, you see this in the NFL too where people are always talking about, well, you've got to get better at tackling. What as a coach can you do in the middle of a season to get better at tackling? Well, what, we, what we've done is we've, we've, we've uh, looked at a lot of video and there, there's some new, new tape out, you know, that um, just to help you with, with tackling and, and understanding the, the, the safety behind tackling, you know. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more. Uh, really good tape about that. So we've been using that uh, all year long. Um, and, and That's been a huge movement. And it's been a, it's been a huge movement, and it's been a lot of help. Uh, you know, USA Football does the whole thing from youth league of talking about heads up tackling. Yeah, you know, right, so, exactly. And they you know train people, and they go through, and so they're it, you know it's it's a huge movement. Um, and 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 we. Um, we we feel like we're a better tackling team. I mean, it, we didn't we didn't tackle terribly. Uh, there were just a few plays where a few they, good plays, a few yeah. big plays, and so that's what happens. All right. Well, we got some highlights uh, from the game, and I think Coach Kelton is going to be kind enough to take us through. Sure. Uh, this first play is a, a 24 yard catch uh, by Mark Pamela uh, on third and 17. It was a it was it kept the drive going. It was a big catch. Pamela had a big day. I think yeah, he was he your did. leading receiver. He know, was. So he eight was. catches or seven catches for. And we were able to hit on some good throws and make some some good plays all day, and that you know that's nice. Uh, this next play is a, a leap and catch by uh, Darius Syme on the on the sideline for 27 yards. Oh, wow. That's good extension right yeah. there. And then here's a here's a, a three-yard three yard run by Noah Sorrento. Uh, this is the first touchdown to put you up 7-0? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it was. And so it's a nice run, nice physical play play by the offensive line. And nice to get in the end zone right away. It's, it, it's <laughs> about getting into the end zone. That's what I, you know, n n what we've been talking about for sure. Uh, this is an open field tackle by Russ Monnet. Who continues to play well. He's, just playing, getting the he's opportunity. playing good football. Yeah. He's playing good football. And then here's a 22 yard run um, by Connor Harris. Um, it's all started, you know, with the guys up front, and Matt Jewett does a great job here as the left guard here. And nice. Yeah, look at that. Cutting this guy off, and it's a good run. And then Connor goes in on a one-yard touchdown. Uh, this is um – early in the third to put you up 14 Again, nine. running behind Matt, and, and they just did a good job. Line and was getting a lot, looks like they're in a little, getting a good surge. Yeah, getting a little, getting some movement, and so we're getting better there uh, each and every day. Um, this is a sack coming up by Chris Hatter. Uh, I believe this is his first sack of the year. And he's come back nicely from missing most of last year with an yeah, injury. Yeah. And then Jamison DeMarco um, forces a fumble, and it's recovered by Austin Thomas. And it was pretty unfortunate because we weren't able to capitalize on this drive in, in the field position. And that, I mean, it's those kinds of plays and that, that kind of consistency that we need to make happen. That kind of alters the state of the game, like it, you it said. It really does. You, know? you, you yeah. really want to be able to... to put points on the board at this point. And then the, the last highlight is a uh, tackle for loss by James Howe and Jack Ryan here uh, for minus three. That's good aggressive so. to aggressive to the ball right yeah. there. And they're, they're, you know, there there are good plays that, that happen out on the field and, and you know it's just there are times where we need to just, again, be more consistent about what we're doing 
how we're doing it. Um, and, you know, I know there's effort, so it's not about effort. It's right. just the consistency part of Execution it. So. And Execution and consistency. Execution and consistency, for sure. What did you say to the guys, uh, say, Tuesday when you got back to practice after uh, – Taking Monday off. What do you say to get them focused on? Um, what, what we really, what we do is, uh, we we actually practice on Sunday, so uh, we talk some Sunday, um, and then uh, Monday they, you know, have off, and then Tuesday when we come in, we we talk about the business of of football and being home, having an opportunity to play two consecutive games at home. You know, we open the season three out of four games on the on road, the road right. and and so we're home. The next three or four are at home, and so our our thought process is win four games, okay, certainly, and then um, you know, but starting with this one this Saturday against Tufts is hold the home field uh, advantage that you have, hold that, uh, that can get you on the road and get you a couple of wins uh, going into the little three. So, all right. Well, thank Coach Kelton, of course, for being on the program as always. Uh, we will be right back with student athletes Alex Brandeis and Kahari Dawkins, both juniors. You're watching the Williams College Football Show. I'm your host, Chris Dufour. Stay with us. Hey, welcome back to the Williams College Football Show. I'm your host, Chris Dufour. Still with me, Eve's head coach Aaron Kelton, as always. Now we're joined by student athletes Alex Brandeis. And Kahari Dawkins. Welcome to the show, fellas. Thank you. All thank right. you. So uh, we'll start with Kahari. You know, as our the segment, Kahari, if you've watched the program, which I'm assuming you haven't, is uh, getting to know your student athletes. And uh, we're going to start with you. You're from the Bronx, New York, political economics major. And uh, before we get into your love of the New York Mets, let's talk a little bit about how you found your way to Williams. Um, I found my way to Williams with uh, Coach Crane after my senior year of uh, football my high school coach asked me if I had any interest in continue playing he and put me high school uh, Riverdale All in right. the Bronx great and he put me in contact with coach Crane and I came up here on a visit loved it and decided to come play here now what was your how, how's your experience at Williams lived up to those expectations when you when you were loving it pre <laughs> <laughs> or how's it going yeah it's been going well um, I came in didn't really know what to expect I slapped around a little bit but kind of picking it up and trying to do my best here. Okay. And of course, uh, talk to me a little bit about political economics. What are you uh, focusing on? What kind of, what, uh, say, I know Alex we're going to get into is a little uh, poly size. What's a little difference there? I mean, obviously um, economics is involved. Yeah. The, tell, tell us what I you guys are focusing on. came in, I was assuming I'd be a poli sci major as well, but uh, took a couple economics classes and actually enjoyed them a little bit so I decided since we have the major that kind of combines the two to combine my be both interests I thought it would be good and exciting. Okay. Now last summer uh, you were all around in the greater New York City area yeah. working your behind off with a catering company. Tell us about that experience what you were doing. Uh, that was a different experience for me just catering. Um, I worked a couple weddings which go pretty late later than I expected and uh, a couple of children's birthday parties um, it was uh, just good hard work just uh, serving and learning how to uh, navigate through social settings so it was, it was a good summer those weddings that brought along <laughs> you have to stay and clean up right you yeah. can't leave things no you definitely can't stay you can't until the party's <laughs> over well you can rush the guests a little bit <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about the Mets yeah. The Mets. Let's go Mets. You're Mets. <laughs> you live in the Bronx and you're a Mets fan. Yeah. Tell me how that happened. Well, it happened because the Yankees, when the Yankees are doing well, the traffic's terrible by my house, so I can't get home. So, so like, the Yankees do bad. Please. Yeah, I'm always rooting for the Yankees to lose. So You I'm had to root for, for someone to win. Yeah. It had to be the Mets. The Mets. Handicap, the, they're up 3-0 on the Cubs as we speak. What's the future hold? World Series title? <sighs> I don't want to jinx anything, but future's looking bright, and we're excited. All right, that's it. No, no mention of the broom. No, yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> he got quiet. He got quiet. All right, let's Quick. jump over and talk to Alex Brandeis. He's from Roswell, Georgia, just north of Atlanta and Marietta. Poli sci major, as I've already mentioned. Uh, how did you find Williams out? Well, uh, Chris, it's a funny story. I was uh, first introduced to Williams. I said, young Coach McGinty introduced me. And uh, he told me I had to come here, I had to visit. He's also from Atlanta. Oh, okay. So, uh, and I asked him what he missed most from the South, and he said fried chicken. <laughs> so on my visit, I brought up authentic fried chicken. 
on here, and so the story goes that I bribed my way into Williams <laughs> with fried chicken. That's that's your kind of your that's close. Yeah. That's close to your legend. <laughs> it's it's pretty true. That's I mean, you can ask Coach Kirk. It's close to true. It's close to true. Without the fried chicken, I'm not getting there. Yeah, he was under the bar by a little bit. Yeah. Then the fried chicken yeah. put him over. Exactly. And of course, you uh, you uh, went back to Georgia this last summer, and you uh, worked at a Mexican restaurant called Dos Margaritas. No, got that wrong. Dos Margaritas. Yes, yes, sir. And that was your first experience with the restaurant. Tell me. That you know. was that was an experience. I uh, <laughs> they uh, they <laughs> called me on uh, first day. They didn't really know my name, and so they just decided Alejandro. Let's just For go the rest with that. Of the summer. Yeah, so yeah. the rest of summer I was Alejandro. The only problem was there was like four or five Alejandros <laughs> in the <laughs> restaurant. So I ended up being like Alejandro, like Dos or Trace or whatever. <laughs> whatever it was that day, however many there were there. Right, uh, on at the same time. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I would you know, help run food, take some orders, do some stuff like that to go orders. And it was really, really cool to meet new people, but I definitely had to brush up on my Spanish before I came in there. Did you do you know a lot of Spanish before? I do not. I took French in high school. So I was, I was <laughs> you not. Were eight ball I was. Start. I was not good. I was not. Oh, now you could probably have a conversation. This yeah. I, yeah. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> don't put me. Don't put me on the spot. Though. I don't I'll care. bring my wife in. We'll see yeah, what happens. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, now you also being from Georgia, of course, uh, you're a big fisherman. Yes. Yes. I love fishing. In the tell in us the, about some of your favorite spots. Uh, what you're fishing for? In the summer, there's a nice little like uh, hidden lake behind my house. Like you go down a little ways, like a gravel road, and there's a nice. Little spot go there at night fishing in the dark as the nitty gritty band likes to sing, <laughs> um, and just get you know like good solid sized fish, eight or ten pounds, and then call it a day. And that's, that's or, your, at night, or, at night, or at night, or at midnight, or at night. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's 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 a lot of fun, it's relaxing. You know, hang out with the boys. And that's probably after a stressful day at La. At yeah, Coast yeah. There's not a lot of Spanish being spoke there. I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right. Well, those that's our segment. I want to thank Alex Brandeis and Kahari Dawkins for coming on the program. We're going to be right back with Frank Ubel and John Allen to give us a scouting report on the Tough Jumbos. I'm your host, Chris Dufour. Uh, we appreciate you watching. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Williams College Football Show. I'm your host, Chris Dufour. As always with me on this segment, Eve's head coach, Aaron Kelton. Joining us now, Frank Ubel, class of 1957, and John T. Allen, the all-time winningest football coach in high school in Berkshire County history and a member of the Williams College staff. They're going to give us a scouting report on the Tufts Jumbos, and they're going to tell you that the Jumbos are 3-1 and one coming into this week for a 2 o'clock game at Fartland Field. I'm going to turn it over to John Allen first. He's going to give us a look at the Jumbos defense. John? Thank you, Chris, and thank you for the accolades there that you earned them. deserve. Okay, Tufts. Mentioned they're three and one. They're tied for third with Mid Middlebury and Wesleyan. They beat Hamilton 24 21 in an overtime game. They beat Bates 17 16. They beat Bowden 43 24. And they lost to Trinity 34 27 in uh, another overtime game. <coughs> Defensive statistics to date, they've given up 23.8 points a game. They've given up 406 yards in their last game. They, they've, uh, 290 of it were passing yards, 116 were rushing yards. Uh, they had six interceptions, third in the NESCAC, uh, last week. They had six fumble recoveries, first in NESCAC, and they had 14 sacks, first in NESCAC. Defensive personnel, they have three returning starters, only two of them seniors. Now, they are a very young team, got very good players, always have, but they're, uh, they're, they're, they're young this year, only two seniors. The Number, uh, Corey Burns is number 96, defensive end, senior captain, 6'1", 250 pounds. He had seven tackles, one sack, and one uh, broken up pass. Number seven is Patrick Williams. He's a strong side linebacker, senior 6'2", 220 pounds. He, he had six tackles. And number 27, 
is Mike Stearns, a defensive back, junior, six feet, 195 pounds. He had five tackles, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery, and one uh, broken up pass. Other players of note, Tim Preston, number 26 defensive back, freshman, 6'1", 180 pounds. N he was Nes NESCAC Defensive Player of the Week. Seven solo tackles, two interceptions, and he broke up a pass in the end zone. Uh, Mika Adrikis, number 97, defensive lineman, sophomore, 6'1", 245 pounds. He had two sacks, a fumble recovery, recovery and he was the next CAC individual leader in number of sacks, which was 4.5 in, uh, as an average. Uh, Steve D. D. Steve D. Cienzo, number 38, linebacker, sophomore, 5'10", 210, he had eight tackles. Zach Thomas, number 92, linebacker, sophomore, 6'2", 215 pounds, he had eight tackles, and he was the NESCAC individual individual, excuse me, NESCAC individual leader in numbers of sacks, which also was uh, 4.5. The defense is, their base defense is a 4-4 four, four or a 4-5. They'll play a 6-2 front in the goal line in the short yardage situation. Their defense is very simple, but it allows them to play fast and to play uh, physical. They do a great job of getting their hands in the uh, passing lanes and batting, and batting down uh, balls that look like they're gonna be slow for uh, completion. The secondary plays a two and a three deep. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, John. We'll jump over to Frank Jubel now, and Frank will give us a look at the Tufts offense. Frank? Thank you, John. <clears throat> Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon, one and all. Last year, Tufts' record was four and four, defeating Williams, among others, 27-20 in Medford. This year, Tufts' record to date is three and one, defeating Hamilton, Bates, and Bowden, and losing to Trinity last week in Medford. Likely, Tufts will align itself offensively in the shotgun and pistol formations. Tufts rushes about 58% of the time. It has eight offensive starters returning from last year. Its offensive stars are as follows. Number three, Chance Brady. He's a junior running back, 5'10", 205 pounds. He's first in conference rushing yards at 421 and rushing touchdowns with six. Last week against Trinity, he rushed 32 times for 132 yards. Number 81 is Jack Kuleen. He's a senior wide receiver, 6'5", 220 pounds. He is second in conference receptions with 22. Last week, he had one reception for 37 yards. Number 41 is Willie Holmquist. He's a junior. Hunter place kicker, six feet, 175. He stands first in conference fields go field goals made with nine and, and 11 attempts, the largest made being 43 yards. See you all Saturday on Farley Lamb Field in Williamstown. Kickoff is scheduled for two o'clock. Game time weather forecast is 56 degrees, partly cloudy, no chance of precip, wind out of the southeast at five miles per hour, relative humidity 62%, sunrise 717, sunset 558. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Frank. Coach Kelton, uh, here come the jumbos, as mentioned by John and Frank both. They're three and one. 
coming off a, a difficult loss to Trinity where they took the Bantams to overtime. Sure. Had a big fourth quarter comeback, uh, and but eventually fell 34-27. Uh, so the, obviously uh, Tufts, you know, is coming in a, kind of a, not on a high note, but with a, some some momentum. Sure, it's plenty uh, of confidence. Yeah, plenty yeah. of confidence. It'll be a, it'll, so it's going to be a big game. Uh, and for you guys, it's a matter of putting uh, last week behind you and kind of re getting back on the horse sure, a little bit. Getting back, getting back to play. You know, that's part of the things that we talk about every day uh, this week in practice um, is, is, you know, our focus in getting back to play. Now, uh, we'll jump right into what we like to call in this program Kelton's Keys. And if you could tell me the three things you think your team has to do to defeat Tufts, this three of many things, or three things, okay. or three of your favorite things that Tufts will, uh, that you think you'll have to do to beat Tufts Saturday. Um, it's going to be very important for us to score the ball. I mean, we have to put points on the, on the scoreboard. Um, so that that's going to be extremely important. Uh, no big plays on defense, and and what we have to do is play consistently in all three phases. Okay, so we have to improve in the run game. Um, we've got to run and tackle on defense, and then in the kick game, we've got to cover kicks well and, and set up the offense in terms of field position uh, in the return game. And if we're able to do those things, um, it, you know, it means we're having a pretty good day. Uh, but but really, it's a consistency kind of thing for us. How do you you know we talk a lot about consistency on the show. How does a how do you go about kind of getting guys to play consistently together as a unit? Well, you know, the, the hard part is just because they're all in different stages of their life right, as exactly. young people. Um, it's like so, a jigsaw puzzle. So they don't have any consistency at all in, <laughs> in regards to that. But um, what you have to do is, is put them in a position where it is that that they're playing fast and not thinking as much and, and that they're they're confident in their ability and what their assignment is. And then you can play with more consistency, I think. So, um, you know, we're younger, a bit younger at some spots, and so we have to, to make sure that those guys are, are, are um, well aware of situations and, and what their assignments are, um, as well as, um, you know, just continue to con give them support that they need um, as they go out onto the field every snap. All right. And that's our show for this week. I want to thank, of course, Eve's head coach, Aaron Kelton, for taking the time out to be on the program, and Frank Hubel and John T. Allen for stopping by and giving us a scouting report of the Tufts Jumbos. That's a 2 o'clock kickoff this week, Farley Lamb Field, Saturday afternoon. We'll see you there. You've been watching the Williams College Football Show. Thanks for watching. Come on, you sons of Williams, sing as we march on the